Hello, my beautiful Aries. Welcome to your July reading. We're going to discuss the overarching or overlighting energies for you for the month of July. We are in um, cancer season right now. And in the beginning of July, we are um, experiencing some emotion. Um, the fire in you may be feeling a little bit muted, especially with uh, uh, with Mars in Taurus and us being in a water sign, the sun being in a water sign. But um, of course, we know that what's on the other side of this is you feeling like yourself again as the sun and then Mars moves into Leo where um, your fire is regenerated and reactivated to full speed. And um, so I hope that you're able to take this time to really be able to um, uh, maybe reassess and reinvent. We are getting ready to go into some um, retrogrades um, season, the second half of the year, um, but just slowing down and taking, a, taking stock of where you're at and how to proceed. There is a message that has been coming through for Aries that I feel is very, um, very much needs to be um, expressed through me at this point uh, for you. And uh, what Spirit continues to say to me is that in order for Aries to achieve their highest potential, the confidence that you naturally possess within yourself and move forward with life, because you represent life itself, um, and boldly, <laughs> boldly make that happen, um, regardless of circumstance. In order for you to um, to be um, congruent or in harmony, in balance, and achieve your highest potential, it's important for you to teach others how to activate the confidence with that within them, because we all possess all of the signs within us. We just have stronger, you know, directions or stronger. What is it? stronger elements within us, when, within each of us that um, this sort of like take the lead and how we approach life, right? Each one of us has our own signs. We have our own natal chart, uh, but we all have the potential of each zodiac sign within us. And part of the reason why everything is constantly moving, the planets are moving, the energy is shifting, is so that we get the opportunity to experience all of those. So like you're experiencing a bit of a slowdown, it's um it's important for you to understand that you are meant to help others. And I know that Aries like to just be independent. They like to do their own thing, which which is great. But a lot of signs don't necessarily know how to do that. And it's important for you to be able to um, reach your highest destiny and thinking about that North Node being in your sign. Now, your personal North Node may not be in Aries, but I feel like you're with you being on Aries and um in the the North Node being in your sign, it's probably perpetuating your own personal North Node, okay? It's probably, you know, very active within you. Not that it's never not active within us, but pretty strongly and maybe from a different angle. Um, but in order for you to fulfill that destiny, it's important to support others in being able to be confident and independent within themselves. The, with the South Node being in Libra, the comfort zone of codependencies and leaning on other people um, to achieve things is really prevalent in a lot of signs and learning to be able to get past that. They need to be able to look to leaders such as yourself to be able to move. They're, they're being with, like I said, with Libra being in that South Node, it's disrupting the comfort zone. And we know that we've been breaking apart. Um, humanity has been breaking apart from codependent behaviors. So this is where you get to really shine even brighter and um, feel, feel completely fulfilled within your own personal destiny um, by teaching others how to do what you do naturally, okay? So I hope that that resonates with you. Um, that's what I felt very strongly I needed to share with you. And uh, without taking up any more of your time, let's go ahead and pull some cards to find out what the current energy is for July, what the focus for you, for your um, highest potential. Uh, what do you need to know? What does spirit have to say? So we are going to begin with the gold foil. Gold, oh, let's get straight now. Yeah. We're going to begin with the gold foil deck. Personally, I love how these colors pop, how vibrant they are. Of course, gold feels just naturally abundant, right? It is it um the element of gold is um Port of, of of abundance. I think that that's why our um, that, that currency had originally been backed by gold because it's supportive of of prosperity. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, we know where we're at now. We don't even go into that, right? Okay. So now I've got to shuffle this way. I'm going to just watch how far it's pops out for you. And uh, wants to be very, very, very particular here in this message for you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Starting off with fire straight away. Strength. There we go. With your um with your companion, fire companion Leo, right there. Okay, so this is talking to us about being able to be in a meditative state. Um, and being able to honestly take a look, take a look at the fears that may be popping up. Because when we are able to be honest with what we fear and no longer fear it, then just recognizing that fear itself, right? We're able to then gain the knowledge that's on the other side of it, which opens up that doorway of infinite potential, which is represented above this, this empress's head. This is the empress looking at anything that may be fearful, um, facing it head on, going straight into that lion's mouth. And, um, and she knows that it doesn't have any actual power over her, okay? So now we're looking at another fire sign here, another fire card, which is talking about a um, uh, success. Uh, maybe after a turbulent time, it's definitely been a long road. We're looking at success um, and celebration. Of course, this is often depicted as a card of marriage. And this is, um, you know, sisters celebrating the, you know, after the marriage has taken place. So anything like if you graduation, um, marriage, maybe moving in with a partner, but I'm feeling a very creative vibe around this. We do have um, creative creativity is very much represented in the um, in the wand opportunity and creativity. And so, um, and we know this is a four, so it means stable. So whatever it is that you have been working towards, you are starting to see the end of the finish line or the, the finish line, the light at the, other, the end of the tunnel and where it all comes together in a very stable way. Same as like, you know, the, the four legs on a table, right? Stable, stable, stable. That's the, that's the energy of, um, of four, okay? So now we have the chariot card, which talks about being able to move forward again with confidence, okay? So this is where you have taken a look at both sides. I'm going to use my wand here. I love this wand. Let's, let's do that. So essentially both sides of the coin. You've been able to see the dark side of things that, um, that you've been looking at. Okay, maybe that fear right there. You know, see the light side, the positive, um, you know, the pros and cons kind of of, of whatever it is that, that's important to you. And now you're literally doing what you do best. You're moving away from the way that everybody else has done things and you are headed out on your own. OK, so this is a cancer card and we're in cancer season, at least for the beginning part of July. So this is tapping into your own personal intuition and letting what is maybe unseen in the physical world, but known by you, again, with confidence, known by you, what it is that you're headed towards. Like, you don't need validation from anybody else. That's not a big surprise for for, um, uh, for, for you, Aries. But let's go ahead and, and look a little bit further here. And now we do have the, 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 the Empress, okay? The Empress is where you aren't pushing for anything anymore, you already know that it's underway, okay? So you're about to reap the rewards from all of the things that you... And I have to say that there's, there's a bit of a hurdle here in the beginning of the month, um, the hurdle of being able to take a look at those fears to then be able to see how much work you've already done and how you're just about there, and then being able to come totally move forward within this finale okay so nothing is ever really finished it's just one energy moving into another energy we have three major arcana cards on the table here okay and so you have you what you have been focused upon has so much momentum and uh, and ready to to harvest and to move you that you um there's not a lot that you could do in your um, daily activities to be able to prevent this from happening. Okay. Like it, it's, uh, it's underway. It, it's, it's happening. It's kind of pulling you along. And yet there's not a lot now left to do other than to head in that direction. So I want some clarifiers though here, because 
because we do it, it it does seem a little bit interesting to me that we have a card of moment movement um through intuition and we ha have a card of like this gestation period what because the the empress is like pregnant she's about to receive the harvest whatever it is that she um she, her creativity what's been growing inside of her now that hey here we go what's been growing inside of you the reason i'm pointing at the stars and the the moon here on this cancer um, individual, um, this cancer energy is because that is the unseen uh, manifestations, the, the known, essentially your your um, intuition telling you, okay? It, the intuition driving you and, and also, but it looks like movement, right? I guess movement toward and yet relax. So relax and let it happen. So let's, Let's uh let's go ahead with these these four cards. What are we what are we looking at here? Well, so I'm gonna get some clarifiers so that we can begin to get an even fuller picture for you, a, a more rounded picture for you. Okay. Um, so we have the strength. Let's go ahead and start, start pulling cards from the um let's move this camera a little bit if we can. Sorry about the bumpiness, guys. Mm -hmm. See my selling at ones there. All right. I want to get more in this camera view. All right. So with the strengths, we have now a clarifying card of the nine of swords. Now the nine of swords talks about where you're in your head and you're sort of like, um, and I don't want to say this in a disrespectful way, but you're making stuff up um, and, and staring the heck out of yourself. Okay. It's where it's this never ending nightmare where, these thoughts that are are circling around your mind on on a particular subject is and it has to do with this fear right here is not necessarily as bad. So I guess this is really good news. Whatever it is that you have been worrying about, it's mostly um, being exaggerated in your own mind, and it's not um, it's not as t it's not as hard, difficult, or treacherous as you may think it is. Okay. So again, this is really good news because it's it's not as bad as you believe it is at this moment, all right? Uh, because sort of like a figment of your imagination, like this scary person, and she's facing it. Again, just like this strength card, just like the Empress here, she's facing that fear, okay? Take a look at what you're, what you're perpetuating in your own mind, the, the scary monster under the bed, right? That's kind of what, what that is. Like you're, you make it. You're making it worse than it has to be, okay? But but there's a way out, okay? There's a way out by recognizing, wait a minute, if I can calm my mind, if I can bring myself to a point of peace inside by not thinking about the subject anymore and just let myself um, let myself feel peace regardless of anything that's going on, I'm going to be able to take a look and be able to identify fear itself Maybe put a label on what it is exactly that you're feeling right now, and and I like to, to I like to isolate just that one thing that needs to be um, that needs to be observed, okay, so that I can see beyond it. So what I do is I I bring myself into a to a meditative state, get myself calm, peaceful, like that that peace beyond understanding, right? Let my body fill up with that. And then take a look at what it is that I had been feeling. And then I sort of like put it in a box inside of me. Now I'm not closing up the box. I'm not, I'm not compartmentalizing. I'm just saying, okay, you're in this box right now. You're not running rampant through my body. You're not running rampant through my thoughts, but I'm the one looking inside the box. That's who I really am is the one looking inside of this box. And I'm able to identify exactly what it is that I'm feeling and allow myself to feel it completely all the way through without telling myself why I'm feeling that way. It's just the, it's just a frequency. It's just a, um, it's just an energy. Okay. And it's ready to move. It's ready to move. If I can just watch it and give myself the space to honestly once. Okay. And here's the key to, to moving something that's heavy or dark or fearful inside of you. Once you're able to isolate that emotion and not tell yourself the story around it, the moment that you go into complete acceptance for that emotion, okay, the reason you're, 
you go into a complete acceptance. Like you're not trying to push it away. You're not trying to make it wrong. You're not trying to feel something else. You're just completely accepting what you feel. That moment that you achieve complete acceptance, it moves and you're able to see the the enlightened version or your higher self's um, version of what you had been fearing for quite some time. Okay. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. This is a, that's a process that I like to use personally when I'm in this state um, and trust I can go and pretty, pretty quickly I could get myself there. So uh, you're definitely not alone. There's a reason why it's a card is because we all do this to ourselves, right? Um, all right, but that's a that's the process I use. So let's keep going with some more clarifiers here. Oh my God, and literally, okay, 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 okay. So just like this is peace and fear, right? Um, but now she's tamed that lion, okay? In in this depiction, she's tamed that lion. So we can see here where you literally have opposing viewpoints, right? One was the fearful version where you're, you're in this never-ending nightmare inside of you. And the other is, um, the other energy inside of you is the absolute conviction and moving forward with courage. Um, with the, nothing standing in your way, right? There's nothing going to get in the way of that lion or that tiger. Uh, I'm not, maybe it's a female lion. I'm not sure. Looks like it could be a female lion, right? All right. So, uh, yeah. So you got the ability to overcome some, something that had been weighing you down. Okay. And, and now we see clearly how this could definitely be what this victory is that you have, um, that you have achieved. All right. So let's get some clarifiers around. Okay. We have 10 of wands. Ten of Wands means now you're absolutely prepared for you like laid down that burden. You um, it's not heavy inside of you anymore. Now what you realize is that what had been happening inside of you was something that was preparing you. Look at him preparing um this 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 weapon or this this wand. He's preparing himself to build something new. So it was a necessary step for you to have this um. Necessary step for you to have this um, um, necessary step for you to have this new achievement, this new platform you're standing on, this new opportunity. You're prepared for this opportunity. Okay, and now the two cards that have popped out here, fascinating, are the Hierophant and the Knight of Cups. Now, like I said in the beginning, that um, this card often is um, associated with marriage, okay? And so the Hierophant would be a traditional um, type of marriage, uh, which um, now we don't have justice here. We're not seeing justice where it's the actual contract, but it's definitely an honored commitment um, and um, a tr in a traditional way, okay? And now we have the Knight of Cups. That's why I'm saying, okay, we're looking, we're definitely looking at love. Now, this could be something you're very passionate about. Um, definitely, Knight of Cups is all about passion, right? We see the red in those candles, like showing us it's passion. So either you're very passionate about this life that you're creating for yourself and you're ready to begin to move forward, or you're very passionate with the commitment that you're making with somebody else and you are more than prepared now to go ahead and 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 make that commitment. Okay, let's go ahead and just move these these guys over so we can get some more um, some more clarifier. And then I will pull it all together once we get all these clarifiers um, together. So maybe you had been afraid. Uh, okay, so let's pop back just, just a moment and remember what was said in the beginning. It's like working with other people. Um, and this could be like, maybe it's a business um, venture and something about you're passionate about moving forward in a business sense with somebody else. So remember that beginning message that Spirit really wanted me to say to you was that working with other people is going to help you achieve your highest potential and teaching them what it is that you know naturally. This is very, very supportive of that. And maybe it was difficult for you to um, to settle down enough to, to commit to working with somebody else. Maybe there was some fear that they were going to hold you back or that they weren't going to be able to um, uh, see the same vision that you did. Um, and it may, could also have been just straight up fear of commitment, okay? So now for the clarifier for this, um, this clarifiers for the chariot, we have the six of wands, another passion. Now, six of wands is talking about your personal pure intention 
And it is talking about you literally moving forward within the passions in a very victorious way where other people can see that and cheer you on, okay? This is absolute victory and it's visible to other people, okay? And now we have the Queen of Swords here, which talks about, which uh, which the Libra card, your zodiacal opposite, I'm the one holding that uh, south node, but she's talking about clarity. I mean, you've got absolute clarity. You've got absolute understanding. The things that you have been through have literally shown you what you need to know in order to have this victory. That seems to be a, a like a reoccurring um, um, message here in your in your reading. Um, let's continue on with some clarifiers for this high priestess. Oh, that's not the high priestess. I apologize, but I mean, high priestess is also cancer, so. Uh, kind of funny I said that, and we're in cancer season. So, uh, so Empress, let's uh, move forward with some more clarifiers for the Empress here. Tell me what this Empress is representing. And the Empress, Empress is re representing a connection with somebody, a very deep connection with somebody who is important to you. Somebody, a significant relationship. Now, it could be a significant relationship to somebody that you have known for a very long time or have become very intimate with. This is a very intimate reading, okay? Intimate in your creations for something you're passionate about and connecting with another in that way, or very intimate in uh, a, a relationship itself, being able to move forward, okay? Um, and, and then we see here, we have the world. So it's the end of, the world is showing us that now you are, um, you have, Again, just like with this Queen of Swords, it's connected to this Queen of Swords. I can feel uh, this, these two, this whole setup right here. <clears throat> excuse me. What we're seeing here is that you have gained all the knowledge necessary to bring yourself to new height, the new sense of enlightenment, this new um, version of yourself. So, so literally, you have overcome. You have prepared yourself. You have made the proper. Um, um, commit you're ready to make the proper commitments but you have educated yourself you've learned what you've needed to learn and you have grown internally um in a very successful way to uh, be able to stand in something that is extremely important to you something that is significant with someone significant okay and so you're prepared now we'll come back for the world um with the world is the end of the major arcana right so end of a massive cycle for you um, and, uh, end of a massive cycle for you. And the next card that follows the world is that circle start begins again with the fool, which is an Aries card. Okay. So you're, you're ending everything that the, that you have been through and bringing yourself to a, a brand new, completely new place, um, closing out that cycle. Okay. So we have now here, um, this, I'm going to, I think I feel like I want to pull one more card for the, the hermit to support the hermit. The hermit is where you're tapping into your own internal wisdom that um, you have been inside. You've gone inside. You know what your intuition is saying. You trust your intuition. You've gained the wisdom through through action and reflecting on that action. And now you're able to organize your life in a very, um, I want to say, within the next um, three to four weeks. And this is a, this is a four-week reading, right? This is a month reading. So the Hermit is a Mercury card, okay? It's, it's Virgo, ruled by Mercury. Now, Mercury does not stay in a sign for more than three to five weeks. If it's in a sign for more than, than it, you know, three to four weeks, five weeks, it, it's, you know, probably in, been in retrograde. And we did have, I think that we did have Mercury in your sign for five weeks this year. So really support it. And the slowdown that you're experiencing right now, and this cancer energy of tapping into your own intuition, tapping into your own emotion. Um, the Virgo, or excuse me, the, the hermit is holding a candle in this um, depiction that helps them to be able to see a short distance. So I liken this to the length of time that Mercury is in a sign. So, and Virgo being a very organized sign, right, itself, and a humanitarian. So what you're doing is you're pulling out wisdom inside of yourself. You're being able to organize the next four weeks with the wisdom that you have gained to, so that you're able to move forward to be a benefit to those that you're in contact with. 
that is that is huge for you. I think that you guys are definitely on the, the path of your own personal ascension journey here to leave your legacy of love um here and to be able to um experience yourself in in um in that light of being the full version of yourself at the point. Of course, there's going to be continuous growth, but you're operating on all, it's like a, a complete version of yourself at this point. And that's got to feel really, really good. And I say that as I pull the nine of cups, which is complete and total satisfaction. I love this for you, Aries. Bravo. Now you have never shied away from the work, but um, I can see where you may have shied away from working with other people. And, um, and I love that you have met that challenge. Like you have met everything else in life. Uh, so, so again, congratulations. I'm, I hope that you're extremely proud of yourself. I am. And I look forward to hearing from you about what it is that you are ready to move forward with in the world. What is that new version of you engaging in? Um, so please do tell me because it's extremely satisfying for you. So, uh, thank you for, for, being with me today for supporting my channel for um you know listening to this message from spirit for you um and i look forward to seeing you in the next reading thank you